Hey guys, hope you are all having a great day today. Today we are going to go over some of the changes taking place in the market that could have huge effects in the future as well as some of the most recent events that took place. First and foremost, let's talk about the tokenization of securities, which according to BlackRock CEO, will be the next big evolution in markets. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, recently discussed his views on where blockchain technology is headed. In response to a line of questioning from the New York Times that revolved around exchange-traded funds, Fink suggested that while he sees ETFs as the driving force behind the previous evolution in investing, tokenization will power the new one. He said and I quote, I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities, will be tokenization of securities. Think about instantaneous settlement of bonds and stocks, no middlemen, we are going to bring down fees even more dramatically, he explained. For those that might not know, tokenization refers to the process where a digital representation of an asset is created on a blockchain and used to verify its authenticity and track its ownership history. This technology can be applied to all manner of assets, including stocks, bonds, real estate, art and other rare collectibles. Despite viewing the technology as transformative, the BlackRock CEO said its further development and integration wouldn't hurt the business model of the world's largest asset management firm. Fink also went on to suggest that while the future is in tokenization, the majority of projects that currently exist wouldn't be able to benefit from its integration into wider society, noting that most crypto-related companies are not going to be around in the future. This outlook is especially relevant from crypto exchanges that launch their own tokens, such as Finance, Crypto.co and the notorious and recently bankrupt FTX exchange. After speaking more specifically about the ongoing collapse of FTX, Fink suggested that the crypto exchange failed because it created and leveraged its own FTX token, creating a degree of centralization that put the platform at odds with the whole foundation of what crypto is. Despite this belief that it was FTX's self-created token that led to its downfall, he still feels that crypto and the blockchain technology that underpins it will be revolutionary. Fink admitted that his firm had a $24 million investment in FTX, but emphasized that it was held in a subsidiary fund of funds and not in the core part of BlackRock's business. Big shout out to Fintech News's Jordan Finiseth for this great article. I strongly believe that there will eventually be an integration between securities and crypto for the reasons Fink already explained. It will be interesting to see how the market continues to transform as technology advances. So, about a week back on our last video, we had stocks rallying past $400, with bulls in full control, full of Fed egos and optimistic outlooks for the holidays. Article after article, the corporate media machine went overdrive to get everyone to quote-unquote, buy the dip as this was the last opportunity before the real rally started taking place. I got some pushback on my videos for being too dramatically negative and that was fine, I welcome all kinds of criticism and different perspective. What I did not hook me was the lack of evidence to support the rally. Once again, I must say it over and over, CPI reports is not evidence of great things to come. The more steep these market rallies are, the harder it will be for the Fed to do its job successfully. Well, Wall Street may have won that day and the next, but markets have retracted from that bull run in dramatic fashion, so let's explore what has changed the enthusiastic approach so wholeheartedly in such quick succession. Wall Street is rattled, they are scared and worst of all, becoming more and more uncertain as even more alarms are beginning to go off with warnings of bad economic conditions to come in 2023. Goldman Sachs warned that more job cuts might be on the way. Bank of America has actually slowed hiring as they prepare for the worst that the recession has to offer. Goldman CEO David Solomon said the bank may have to prune staff in certain areas and exercise caution with its financial resources amid mounting economic certainty, according to Bloomberg. Morgan Stanley embarked on a plan to reduce its global workforce by about 2,000, which amount to about 2% of the total. These statements underscore the pain sweeping the US with layoffs and hiring freezes finally beginning to extend beyond the technology sector. As you might have seen on the news or your social media feed, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple and even Twitter have all been laying off thousands of workers in the past months. With this trend now outgrowing the tech sector and finally hitting the financial sector, you have got to assume that there are some serious bumpy times ahead of us. Remember that Goldman's business lines are closely linked to the economy, and the bank has forecast slowing growth ahead. Wall Street is facing a tricky balancing act to keep a lid on total spending while preventing defections by its top performers. If this isn't enough for you to make you bearish as you strongly believe in the performance of the strongest stocks in the market, 
let me paint you an ugly picture. Apple, the golden child of US securities, has announced that they are going to scale back their ambitious self-driving plans for its future electric vehicle and postpone the car's target launch date by about a year to 2026. You are also seeing other companies like Meta and even Tesla cut back on product releases. This is not normal that everyone is delaying everything. It's a simple and easy fact to acknowledge. The Fed blew their chance at a soft landing, at least if current economic signals are to be believed. They tried their best, but as I have explained in the past, it was a little too late and the current administration also failed to stimulate the economy in the right way. Our economy is not going to be in a recession because it already is in one, and the corporate media keeps pushing definitions to its most hysterical and absurd limits to avoid admitting to the painful truth that we all know to be true. What they are indeed right about is that we are not in the deep, not yet. We are far from the bottoms we could potentially see around summer next year when things really take a swing. For examples, something that nobody is accounting for is the millions of potential Americans that will be left homeless after missing mortgage payments, or the millions that will not pay rent. How many will default on credit card payments, which are already at historical record highs? Who will be the consumer pushing quarterly earnings up when a substantial majority of people can't pay for both food and a roof? That is why I am telling you that the next set of quarterly earning reports will be paramount, because they will begin to paint a picture of the severity of economic conditions we are facing. But even then some of you aren't convinced, so let's get less fundamental and more technical. An inverted yield curve, which means when short-term yields on government bonds are higher than long-term yields, is generally considered a recession predictor. Right now, the 10-year Treasury bond is yielding at 3.6% while the 2-year bond yield is almost at 4.4%. This indicator has served time and again to predict recessions and it hasn't failed us yet. I know there are people that are saying this recession will be different than the others, but that has as much weight as a sheet of toilet paper. When you have an indicator that has always proven true, and your only counter-argument to this is that unemployment is still looking good, your point kind of falls apart. Unemployment is going to grow as layoffs extend from just tech sector into others. Big recessions with housing crisis on the menu tend to have huge numbers of unemployed numbers jump up, which I think is what is going to happen as well. The truth is that the Fed did all it could without causing a recession by accident this year. They boosted key interest rates six freaking times and all they did was manage to not get CPI data to exponentially increase month over month. Do you know what the funny thing about raising the cost of borrowing money is? Markets cannot adjust to that, no matter what. It creates a level of uncertainty that even the big banks can't handle. As a result, markets have begun to retrace from their little rally. I get the question of could markets rally more or is this as high as they can get? To this, I say that there is plenty of room for markets to rally, but once again, as I keep saying, the more it rallies, the worse inflation gets, which means the hawkish the Fed will get, which means the more bearish the stock market will look in the end. So yeah, the harder we bounce off, the harder we will fall. I am not really buying big into stocks right now, we are just playing options on my Discord. My only investment right now is on a couple hand-picked companies and of course, I am biggest on GameStop out of all of them. GameStop and AMC are hurting, each in different ways. AMC's investing venture in Mycroft Mining was questionable and a gamble that did not pay off as expected. GameStop's attempt to capitalize on the crypto mania proved to be too little too late and their new NFT platform is not yielding in enough profits as crypto endures its biggest darkest winter among regulatory uncertainty, defaults by major crypto exchanges and general public negative perception. Of course, this doesn't mean these companies are screwed out, it just means they are facing serious challenges but still holding on. GameStop's earnings come out tomorrow which should be interesting. And that is pretty much everything I wanted to discuss with you guys. I might have another video come out by Friday but if not, then you should see me on Sunday. Regardless, know that I am still here with you guys holding these red bags down to zero or to the moon. Love you all, I am going to keep pumping content out for you for the foreseeable future so do not think I am leaving anytime soon. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord already so that we can day trade together. I posted a couple screenshot of my alerts today and some of the gains that the members in our little trading community made. If you are interested in day trading and making money while you wait for Moas, hit me up on Discord and ask me for permission to check out TradePass. I will be more than happy to let you guys in and check out all of our services. We are currently over 8,000 members in the Discord, mostly made up by GME and AMC investors and day traders, so you will certainly find a group of people to discuss whatever you want. 
The links will be in the video description if interested. Until the next video, I wish you all an amazing rest of your day and to the moon.